It's time to get rid of the five love languages for good. I've been waiting for this research. Just came out in the Washington Post. I've been saying for a while, anything that tells me a woman who centers my O and doesn't center men and all that crap loves to get her kitty cat eaten a lot. There's one person I am not going to listen to. A group of people. And that is a old white man pastor about love languages. Like this dude... I'm going to get into it in a second. Not only is it like, just imagine the kind of mentality he has. A southern church white man. Not only is it so bleh, healthy for women, this dude is also like super racist. But back to that in a minute. Baptist pastor Gary Chapman here finally being challenged by like scientists and researchers and actual marriage and couples counselors who aren't a part of the Baptist church like okay first of all this is just bad science it's not even science and second of all it is just like totally uh keeps women in abusive relationships at its core the assumptions about love languages stand upon shaky ground unsupported by empirical evidence you know this dude the fact is everyone i know knows the five love languages my friends here in france my friends in germany my friends uh, uh, like my friends back in the u.s my friends from like I don't know, pretty much every country. And you know, being an immigrant, I have lots of friends from all over the world because we all tend to hang out. Uh, they all know this. Look at this, it's been 50 languages, okay? It's in 50 different languages, 20 million copies. People, I've never read this book, but I know a lot about it. Why do I know so much about what this Southern old white man says about love and relationships and how to keep a marriage healthy? Before you fight me on here, this, it's not that like the, the, these love languages don't exist. It's the fact that this dude focuses on people being super focused on their partner's love language. And when that comes from a white man from the South at a, in the church, do you, do you, how much do you think he cares about the man caring about her love language? No, this is like totally about like reinforcing women centering men's love language, which is almost always schmegs and acts of service and compliments. Actually, all of it. Gifts. Hello, empty stocking at Christmas for the mom, you know. Chapman, good old Pastor Chapman here, says that, you know, the success of his book speaks for itself. Sure, buddy. So several people have looked into it. These two people did some serious research on this and found that the key assumptions behind love languages aren't supported by relationship science. For one, people don't really have a primary love language. Discovering and learning to speak your partner's primary love language is the key in Chapman's book. But again, your partner being the man. The men, I, I promise you, from the South and a white woman from the South, I will never believe that a white man gives a crap about his wife's love language if he's part of the church. There's a few exceptions. There's a, I know some of those exceptions, but the pastor is not like, hey, eat her. No way. He's like, hey, lady, he wants to have mm -mm 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 all the time. Whether you like him or not, you got to do it. Then he'll feel loved and your marriage will be saved. The research also found that people tend to find all of the love languages, all five, and there's more than five, to be like equally important. Or at least they, they, they like all of them. But again, because of men and toxic masculinity and the way that men are conditioned under patriarchy to not even know their own humanity, not have language for how they feel, you know, they're just taught to be like dead inside and robots and just keep working and, you know, using violence and stuff in terms of how they deal with things. Even if they did have something else that really meant something to them, in order to perform masculinity, they're always going to be like, yeah, physical touch. That's it. I need that. Because a lot of men, like a lot of women, don't even know what love is. Because how can you love someone that you're actively oppressing? And on the women's end, how can I love someone who's not a baby who I am enabling and literally martyring myself for? That's not love. That's not romantic love. That's codependency, limerence, something else. But that ain't love. So they say that the fact that you, m that most people don't have one primary love language, that alone debunks this whole thing. That's a big point in the book. Number two, there are more than five love languages. And I've always thought that this five love language thing is super weird. And now I know why. They finally explained it to me. Research shows there's other love languages. I love this one right here. Such as supporting pers uh, partner's personal growth and autonomy. Like it says here, 
We know these things are really key for relationship satisfaction and might be more meaningful to couples with egalitarian values. Ding, 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 ding. The church is not about this. Another love language. This shows that developing conflict management strategies and integrating partners into one's larger social network, network are also distinct behaviors that maintain relationship satisfaction. Oh, you mean like uh, my partner supporting my personal growth, helping me heal stuff, me supporting his personal growth, helping him heal stuff through relational healing, and then also learning how to have conflicts, deal with conflict, and grow as a result of that. That could be a love language because to me, that's like one of the biggest love languages. I don't give a crap about gifts. The fact that this stuff, like, okay, let me just finish. Relationships experts, experts say other important behaviors don't fall neatly into a love category. There's hundreds of them. Like this, just being nice to your mother-in-law, being on time for the opera, creating interest together, learning things together, doing things together. The list goes on. This to me is all so much more important and yet it doesn't fit neatly into a category. Those things are not just spending time together because me watching you watch football is time spent together, but it's not uh, intentional. I don't feel loved. I don't feel connected to you watching you watch TV or you know, whatever. But you know what I do love? Doing novel things together, etc., etc. The third problem with Pastor Gary's dumb book is that sharing the same love language may not improve your relationship. Besides, the, the science doesn't back any of this up either anyway. They interviewed a lot of people with this, including John Gottman, if you want, but he also thinks this is pretty much trash. Could uh, 20 million people be wrong? Yeah. So Pastor Gary has a degree in anthropology and a doctorate in adult education. And he created this whole five love languages crap after doing couples counseling in North Carolina for church couples. So again, if you are not like Baptist, this doesn't, you know, this may not resonate with you, especially once we learn about Gary's beliefs, but that in a second. This dude even admits, well, I'm not a researcher. He's like, you know, 133 million people have taken the love language quiz. And you know, this dude goes on tour, speaking at conferences. And all these couples just say, you know, we just want to tell you, your book saved our mammy. Yeah, but he's doing these conferences at church. He says all this nonsense. I don't even care. I don't care what Gary has to say. This is the main problem I have with it. This stupid love language stuff is tries to help people negotiate with their own needs, their own observations, their own truths. Compromising that to make their partner happy. Now, who do you think they're usually talking about? Hmm, Baptist church, white man, old boomer from the South. Hmm, and here we go, right here. This was one of the, the stories in his dumb book. It has been altered since he realized it's a little problematic. One of the women, Anne, came to him, was unhappy in her marriage and was like, well, how do I love somebody? If I hate them, because why? She felt used rather than loved in schmegual encounters with her husband. Although her husband never attended counseling. Shocker. Gary was like, you know, use your husband's primary love language of physical touch. And his second one, words of affirmation. Of course, that's his second. The best. You're the strongest. Oh, my God. And then, her, you know, probably had to give him some BJs or whatever. He told her to focus on these, these two for six months. Give verbal affirmations, but stop all verbal complaints. Don't complain. Shut up, bird. Suck his D. Let him just dead fish, will ya? Just let him have it. This is coercion. This is marital grape. This is what this man was preaching. It's even worse because instead of the man doing it, it's like the woman being like, I have to do this. And then he changed his tune to, okay, well, maybe just, you know, do this. Even, you know, twice a week. Surprise them by being aggressive. Schmegley. Pastor Gary said this is an example that we can love a person that we don't like. And by love, that means fork and do everything for them. But I promise you, these men do not love these women. And he's like, well, this isn't about physical abuse. Yeah, it's usually not physical, but coercion, emotional abuse, coercive control. Blah, 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 blah. That's not any better. But Gary's not just Baptist. He's Southern Baptist. I highly suggest this article, The Bigot Who Wrote the Five Love Languages. Because he also wrote this. He openly encourages discrimination against the LBTQ plus community. He wrote this insanity. He blames reverse racism and tells people, black people not to be mad. And he's also a fan of this. Bye, Gary.